नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी शो ऑन दूरदर्शन इंडिया नेशनल ब्रॉडकास्टर अबाउट इंडिया फॉरन पॉलिसी इंडिया इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन इंडिया मेजर स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप्स एंड हाउ इंडिया कॉन्शियसली एंड डिलिबरेटली इज ट्राइंग टू मेक एंड शेप अ बेटर वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर यूर्स इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर टेकिंग अप द थीम ऑफ अ वेरी वेरी सेंट्रल डिफेंस पार्टनरशिप ऑफ इंडिया विद द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स यू एस इंडिया डिफेंस कोऑपरेशन इज ऑन द अप स्विंग a lot of new initiatives have been announced and uh, there is a huge expectation that india us defense partnership will grow to a higher level which will have huge strategic ramifications and implications for asia indo pacific and indeed for the global power configuration and to discuss this topic uh, I, let me introduce you to a very special guest joining us uh, via remote uh, lieutenant general anil ahuja general ahuja he is a decorated uh, retired officer of the indian army and uh, he was actually the co-chair of the task force interagency task force on the us india uh, defense technology and trade initiative uh, i want to welcome uh, general ahuja to the show thank you for joining us general ahuja uh, thank you professor chawde general ahuja us india uh, is uh, you know looking up uh, in a big way uh, there have been a flurry of new initiatives that have been announced uh, to ramp up the defense uh, industrial cooperation technology transfer whole range of uh, you know acronyms are being thrown around now to describe this uh, upswing in the relationship i'd like you to start with the you know fundamental question as to why is it happening now and what is the significance uh, you think of the all the new defense industrial cooperation initiatives where does this take uh, us and india uh the us has declared india as its major defense partner long ago uh but now uh it looks like finally we are uh putting the money where the mouth is walking the talk and probably going to achieve a higher level of strategic partnership through these initiatives so your opening comments on the uh latest developments and how you see us india defense cooperation the graph the way it is uh emerging see uh we are at a time where we are making uh, we are making a transition into a next phase where uh, you asked me this question about our uh, industrial defense industrial cooperation now from the earlier days of uh, overcoming hesitation of history we entered into that phase of our defense cooperation where uh, india was designated as the major defense partner and we concluded foundational agreements and a number of other initiatives we put the building blocks in place mm. and today after the visit of uh, us uh, 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 secretary of defense to india 4th 5th june 2023 uh, we are talking of defense industrial cooperation we are fast tracking technical cooperation mm. where we are laying special emphasis on removing regulatory blocks at mm. least refining our procedures on both side which hitherto have impaired a uh, deep cooperation between us we are focusing on co development of new technologies on co production of uh, existing and new systems whether it's in uh, the land air or maritime domain so today if we talk of this something which is long lasting which is not just plug in and plug out mm. uh it will act as a ballast in our relationship so that's why i think it's very important for us the kind of long lasting deeper cooperation that we are going into right general um why do you think this long lasting cooperation is happening now i mean uh, it seems that the uh, so called uh, de facto cold war between the us and china is hotting up and uh, we are seeing more and more close encounters uh, that the navies and the air forces of the chinese and the americans are having the you know competition is very intense the struggle is really really uh you know uh, strong and in that context is it, is that why the americans are now warming up to this more you know strategic and longer term vision especially for technology transfer 
because in the past uh, you have been uh, you have served on the DTTI. Uh, there have been disappointments, and uh, you know they, they, we have had expectations. They have not been fulfilled. But um, what explains the timing? We are in 2023 and looking forward to the rest of the decade. Why are the Americans now more forthcoming? You think with this, uh, you know, more deeper uh, and sustained engagement with a longer term outlook. Undoubtedly, there's the China factor and the Americans seem to be more worried about it now than they were even five or uh, 10 years ago. And is that the propelling factor alone or what else is happening in your view that's uh, taking uh, the trusted defense partnership to this higher level? That's a very valid point that by, by now, and you also asked that uh, more in, in a common perception, why did technology cooperation not succeed earlier? See, China is a common factor. It's a common threat. But at the same time, that's not the only factor. We have a shared vision hmm. and we have traveled quite a long distance for us to realize that between two of our countries, there's mutual dependence. There are things which we can contribute towards the US's Indo-Pacific policy and the global aspirations that they have. And likewise, they can contribute to us. So today, in the Indo-Pacific, when we are looking at the threats that exist across multiple domains. You know, the warfare has gone much beyond land, air, and sea. We're talking of cyber, space, uh, a number of other domains. Now, in these, to bridge the gap with our adversaries, if we work together, we have great talent in our country. We have skilled manpower in our country. And working together, we can bridge this technology gap mm. in a telescoped time frame. And we can do it together. And there are, like I said, there are mutual benefits. Now, your second part of your question was, uh, why has it not succeeded as yet? Well, the perception, yes, outside is it's not succeeded as yet. But let me tell you, technology cooperation is not where the technology comes packaged as ready to use mm. or comes gift wrapped. No, it doesn't. Now, technology comes by and by when we work together. Now, initially when we started, because DTTI, mm. which the idea was initiated in 2012, it started getting operationalized around end 2014-15. Now, the expectations on the Indian side were we would have technology here uh, in a very quick time frame. And the expectation on the US side was that because of this technology cooperation, we'll get benefits of trade, immense benefits of trade. Mm. And both of us had certain expectations, which perhaps have a longer gestation period than what we had perceived in our minds. Absolutely. So our viewers, uh, General Anil Ahuja is saying that uh, it's been slow progress, but we have made progress and the foundation has now been laid for, you know, stepping up a gear and going to the next level. And um, I have uh, very interesting uh, comments from the U.S. Defense Secretary, uh, Lloyd Austin, uh, while he was on an India trip, uh, talking about technology, why they want to share it with India and what is the importance of India in the overall defense strategy of the United States. Let's listen in to the uh, U.S. Defense Secretary and continue the discussion. And we're still very careful about guarding our technology, and we only share uh, our you know, technology with uh, countries that we absolutely believe in and trust. And, and so you see an increasing desire for us to share uh, with, uh, with our partners here in India. Uh, and I think that if you look at some of the things that we're working on, uh, Antoine, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I would describe this period as, uh, is certainly consequential in terms of the kinds of things that we're doing, working together on, but I would also say it's transformative, uh, in that, uh, 
you know, again, uh, there, there are opportunities to, uh, to increase capacity, uh, increase capability, and, and all of that is good as you look at what it takes to uh, ensure that uh, we continue to work towards a free and open Indo-Pacific. And again, we share that vision with India and with many other countries in the region as well. The first piece is, is, uh, is it accurate to say that uh, the U.S.-India relationship is one of the most consequential in, the, in this century? I, absolutely. I, these are you know, two, the two world's largest democracies working together toward a common vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Tremendous capacity in this country. Uh, and, uh, and again... Uh, like-minded countries working together, can, I think, can create uh, lasting effects. And the effects that we're after is what we've hammered home over and over again, is just to make sure that uh, the region remains open and secure and, and promotes uh, commerce and, and uh, the, the free flowing of ideas and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it is a very, very important uh, uh, relationship. So there you go, viewers, uh, Lloyd Austin, U.S. Defense Secretary, saying we are in a consequential and transformative period of U.S.-India defense cooperation. And he says the goal is that India and the United States will combine, uh, pool their strengths and resources, and will have, he says, uh, quote, lasting effects, by which he means the free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, coming back to uh, General Ahuja, uh, General, we heard the U.S. Defense Secretary uh, laying out uh, his vision and uh, the, you know, American outlook towards uh, defense cooperation with India. Uh, let's talk a little bit deeper about some of the initiatives. I mean, for example, the ICET, you already mentioned the initiative on critical and emerging technologies. Uh, there is the Indus X, uh, INDUS X, that's been announced uh, lately. And uh, this is going to bring the private sectors of both countries closer together. And uh, the many other such, there is the uh, dialogue on advanced defense domains. Uh, so all kinds of uh, new uh, initiatives are being bandied about. So uh, please uh, tell the audience um, how forthcoming the U.S. is now with technology, because historically people have been skeptical and people think that Americans are very guarded and they don't easily let go of their core technology. But here you have the U.S. Defense Secretary coming out and saying we want to do it with India. And uh, obviously, uh, market share is one factor also, right, for them, because uh, the latest, as of 2022, uh, U.S. accounts for only about 11% of India's uh, defense acquisitions, while uh, Russia is still around 45 and France is uh, 29%. So American companies obviously want more business in India. There's no doubt about it. But in the process, like you said, it also benefits us. So I guess um, it's a win-win situation where we need the advanced know-how uh, to close the strategic gap with China that you are talking about. And uh, on the other hand, the Americans uh, profit from it, but also are able to do what they call the offshore balancing because they can't on their own stop the Chinese juggernaut. Uh, so your thoughts on how forthcoming the Americans are and uh, from your experience of being in the DTTI, um, what kind of conditionalities come with this? I mean, do the Americans give freely? And if so, or, or do they say, you know, there are end user agreements and all these limitations? And how free can how freely can we use this technology to build up our own muscle power uh, in this emerging Indo-Pacific uh, balance? That's a that's a very valid point. And uh, particularly considering from our past experience, where despite traveling for a long distance, we we haven't been able to create something, I would say, a portable port, like perhaps a nuclear submarine being leased or such like headline making things. Well, yes, we've not been able to do it. And so, rightly, somebody would ask, why would you do it now? Yes, the question today is that the technology cooperation uh, it will come as our strategic convergence increases, mm. as our visions converge. No, there is something beyond beyond the monetary inputs or the strategic significance of withholding that technology. Uh, 
there is something greater than that which is spurring this activity. Our capability to contribute to the US capability development in technology has also increased. So today we are converging because we can support each other. And then yes, it definitely gives us a much greater market. And the market access that we have in India with the application of artificial intelligence and quantum and the space, uh, all the aspects that we cover in ICT, their applications are much wider. Now, the next question is, are there restrictions? Do they come with a certain amount of controls? Yes, definitely. Uh, no technology comes on platter, like I had al already said. It takes time progressively to transfer technology. It takes time to progressively absorb and imbibe technology for its application. So today, we have to do the capability mapping, an honest capability mapping mm. on both sides. And for our side, for getting technology, we should be clear about what is our base level, where can we absorb it, and in what time frame. It's not going to be absolutely smooth flow. We have to work honestly, sincerely, learning the lessons of our previous cooperation to overcome the impediments in licensing right. and other so-called bureaucratic hurdles, which when we sat as bureaucratic appointments, we call them bureaucratic guardrails, whether you want to call them hurdles or guardrails. Well, we have to work hard, but there's an option. We have to work hard, says uh, Lieutenant General Anil Lahuja viewers. And uh, on this, uh, I'd like you to listen in to Dr. Stuti Banerjee. She's a senior research fellow at the Indian Council for World Affairs, a think tank in New Delhi. And uh, she's talking about uh, three areas which she thinks are critical for the uh, takeoff of the U.S.-India Defense Partnership. Let's listen in to Dr. Banerjee and continue the discussion. Secretary Austin's visit to India has reinforced the fact that defense is an important pillar in India-U.S. strategic partnership. The two countries are now looking at a roadmap for defense cooperation, and within this they have identified several areas of for joint collaboration, of which the three that stand out are, the first is the India-U.S. Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, this initiative is looking at not just defense innovation, but cutting edge technology development in sectors such as AI, advanced telecommunications, etc., which have used both in the civilian and military sectors. The second is the cyberspace domain. As our military systems become more complex and interconnected, it becomes critical to ensure the safety in the cyberspace domain. And the third is space. Both the IAF chief and the CDS have highlighted that militarization and weaponization of space is increasingly becoming a reality. The United States has announced a space force and it becomes critical to ensure the safety of our assets in space. Therefore, a collaboration cooperation in this sector also becomes very important. I feel that these are the three sectors which need to be highlighted for a future ready defense cooperation. Viewers, uh, Dr. Stuti Banerjee talking about some of these uh, emerging areas of U.S.-India defense cooperation. Uh, General Ahuja, I want to come back to you on one point that uh, Dr. Banerjee was making, which is about space. And uh, I've increasingly been reading the term ISR, Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance, and also space. And these are being talked about as the new frontiers for U.S.-India cooperation. And um, at an operational level, you know, you, are, you commanded... Uh, Indian Army uh, forces uh, along our two borders. At an operational level, how important is this? I mean, already US-India, we have uh, signed the foundational agreements, as you mentioned, uh, including the one on geospatial intelligence, including satellite imagery and all this. And it's been reported that uh, we have been able to thwart uh, Chinese uh, attempted incursions at the line of actual control, thanks to real-time intelligence sharing with the US. That's the kind of concrete cooperation that I think we will be looking uh, to extract and leave, uh, leverage from this uh, emerging uh, new areas of cooperation. So how important is space? How important is ISR? And uh, as, 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 an, as, as a military man, how do you see this benefiting India in its ability to uh, defend its terrain and to uh, push back uh, aggressors? 
if if to a viewer i had to say answer your question in uh, crisp two three words the importance of isr i would say intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance is as important to a nation to a military as eyes and ears are to me individually now hmm. we have been talking of uh isr and when it comes to maritime domain we've been talking of maritime domain awareness across all domains uh on the surface under the sea so what you are talking is you are wanting and getting real time actionable intelligence mm. and you are looking at gaining information which is much larger and these are our eyes and ears now definitely when uh, our standoff in eastern ladakh started uh, you are well aware we leased uh, two drones from the us we've been using them very very effectively and we progressively built our own capability in isr to be and we made immense progress in this and this remains a priority area because uh, forewarned is forearmed mm. and uh, yes we have been able to thwart a number of actions most uh, glaring to a uh, common viewer would be what happened in the arunachal pradesh in december 2022 right. when the uh, east of tawang chinese right to include into that area and we had an effective isr system which helped us fought the uh or the chinese uh, attempts in the area of yangtze east of tawang so that's that's something very rare and space is an important domain where or through which we implement our isr mm. and definitely having signed uh the foundational agreements of comcasa uh, and beka it just facilitates us to use this for our operational applications and this will remain a priority area of our cooperation and this will remain a priority area of our own capability development right uh general um there has been a suggestion from a us congressional committee that india should consider joining the nato plus 5 arrangement or the nato plus arrangement uh, which includes a number of countries in the indo pacific uh, like japan south korea and australia and uh, of course uh, we have not been very keen on being associated with nato per se uh, because of our concerns about strategic autonomy and all that but short of joining some nato plus arrangement uh, we already have the quad uh, grouping anyway in the indo pacific which includes some of these countries but short of that uh, short of nato plus a uh, short of any kind of formal alliance which uh, will not be palatable uh, in a sovereign independent minded uh, rising power like india what more can we do uh, operationally we are doing lot of joint exercises already with them and um, now the issues of permanent presence perhaps in the indo pacific especially in the maritime domain and what more can we do with these new technologies and the new defense cooperation how can we uh, deploy these uh, in your view to deter and counter uh, the chinese expansionism which is actually directly challenging india's influence uh, in the indian ocean region see as it is uh, we are playing a very important role in indo pacific maritime domain awareness we have a fusion center uh for the maritime information our viewers would already be aware of this and cooperation in technology helps us to gather this information uh and uh pass it in real time it enhances our capability many folds so definitely we should go ahead and cooperate in enhancing our capability of domain awareness and in terms of isr like i had already mentioned in the earlier question now whether we join any other countries whether we have a nato kind of a cooperation 
well these are issues which have uh, which have much greater uh, implications beyond the military domain mm. and which are based on the principles of countries foreign policy and perhaps uh, some of the diplomats may be much better to answer this than a military man because as a military man i would like to get the maximum information maximum intelligence in the quickest time what i call an actionable intelligence and definitely understand that the technology enables me to plug in much far and wider with our partners and to get it much faster now what mechanism we uh, institute internationally i would like to reserve my comments than uh, giving some over the top comment on this. thank you thank you uh, so viewers uh, left general anil ahuja is saying that uh, as a soldier uh, he would want you know maximum intelligence maximum inputs maximum technology maximum weaponry and uh, so that we can close the gap uh, with our principal adversary in the indo pacific and also deter territorial aggression uh, by this adversary so us india partnership uh, remains a bulwark it's an important uh, pillar uh, of india's uh, strategic growth there's no question that uh, india can become uh, a, a, a leading power in the world only through a stronger military and for a stronger military we need uh, trusted technology partnerships the us india one promises to be a very very central one for that going forward so let's hope that this partnership uh, really flowers and flourishes and yields the results that we all expect uh, sooner than later and of course the chinese are watching verily and they will be concerned about this but then now we have a new india that's you know going ahead uh, with its core strategic objective of becoming a leading power through leveraging its uh, major uh, friendships and partnerships undeterred by whatever uh, our external adversaries want us to do so we are making the right steps and uh, this is the us india defense cooperation is one example of a more confident and uh, a more uh, assertive india on the world stage i want to thank uh, lieutenant general anil ahuja for sharing valuable insights uh, expertise thank you general thank you so much thank you thank you very much so there you go viewers us india defense uh, cooperation is something to look forward to it's a game changer uh, if implemented uh, as per the vision of the two sides and uh, it's something that we need to support uh, as part of india's rise i'll see you again next time until then take care